Verse 13, and the same hour was there a great earthquake. So in the same hour, that same hour that they go up, you'll notice that God sends down a great earthquake at that time. So then there's a huge quaking going on over here. Huge earthquake. So the world is shaking. And when the world is shaking over here, the tenth part of the city fell. So notice one-tenth of the city is gone. It's like God, was, God is passing down judgment on them. So a tenth of it is gone. You might say, why is it that God would take away a tenth of that Antichrist city for himself. You know why? Go to the book of Isaiah. Because the Antichrist takes a tenth from the Lord. All right, let's look at the book of Isaiah. Chapter 6, verse, chapter six, verse 11. Chapter 6, verse 11. Isaiah chapter 6 verse 11. A tenth of it God takes because this man of sin takes a tenth. So God is always that type of person, passing down proper judgment and justice. That's the type of God we serve. If you think God is mean during this couple of years at the tribulation, you got to realize this. For 2,000 years, what have you been doing to God? And you think he's mean during that couple of years? Shouldn't he get proper judgment for each year, for each hour you've sinned against him? So to be quite honest, tribulation, even though it's the wrath of God, he's still shedding enough grace. Yeah, that's good preaching. To, to, for us to get at a point that we think God is that horrible and that mean shows how far we've fallen. Yeah. All right, Isaiah chapter 6, verse 11. Then said I, Lord, how long? And he answered, until the cities be wasted without inhabitant, and the houses without man, and the land be utterly desolate. So notice he's talking about his city Israel, that there's a desolation going on over here. Now it could be, since it says desolate, this could probably match up with what? Abomination of desolation at Matthew 24 and Daniel 9. And remember I compare that with Revelation 11, right? Remember, Revelation 11, the Antichrist is doing his sort of abomination of desolation at the city of Jerusalem. So it could be that Isaiah 6, verse 11, could be referring to that. So during this time when the Antichrist is what? Persecuting the Jews, see, making that desolation, what would occur? Verse 12, and the Lord have removed men far away, and there be a great forsaking in the midst of the land. Right? Yeah, because the Antichrist took it over. Look at verse 13. But yet in it shall be a tenth, and it shall return, and shall be what? Eaten. Yeah. Who is that? The, holy seed, the children of Israel. Keep reading. So the holy seed, the last part of verse 13, so the holy seed shall be the substance thereof. See? It's those Jews right there. Fair is fair to God. He gets a tenth. All right, let's go back. Revelation 11. Good Revelation chapter 11. But God gives a number over here, which is interesting. So it could be that we might get a number of the people in the Antichrist city then, maybe actually, during this time. It says the tenth part of the city fell, right, at Revelation eleven thirteen. 13. If it's a tenth part, notice the population. And the earthquake were slain of men 7,000. So during the middle of that earthquake, there are 7,000 people who were killed. So maybe... If 10th part of city is referring to that population, then it could be 70,000 people in total during the Antichrist reign. Why? Because it's for a special group of his chosen people. And a lot of these elites already have their seat with the Satan anyway. So these people already have their seat made. So it could be referring to that, or it could be referring to the city itself at verse 13. It could be referring to the city itself rather than the population. Okay, let's keep reading. And the remnant were what? Affrighted. So the remaining people, they were scared and what? Gave glory to the God of heaven. So they give him glory. So notice right over here that there are these people 
when they see God's judgment, they get scared. And then there's fear, and then they give him glory. If that's the case, this would make sense over here that if the tribulation saints, they get raptured up to heaven, the question that we Bible believers get asked is, then who are the people who go through the tribulation and enter the millennium? Because there's no doubt that there is a group of saints that will have to go through the tribulation and enter the millennium. Yeah. But we mentioned here that there's a post-tribulation rapture, so how do you explain that? The answer is simply given over here. You saw at verse 13 it said remnant. If you look up the word remnant throughout the Bible, that would refer to his Jewish saints throughout the tribulation time. They were afraid and gave glory to God. If that's the case, then look at Revelation chapter 14 then. Revelation chapter 14. Notice what is part of the tribulation gospel. Revelation chapter 14, verse 6, verse 6. Now, the gospel, it means what? Good news, right? If the gospel means good news, it's not good news to say to the whole world that you're going to be damned and that there's judgment, no turning back. No, it's rather that if you look at Revelation 14, it's kind of like how Christians preach. We give warning of God's judgment, but then there's a solution. There's a chance. That's what makes it good news. You know what makes it more good news? Is that when you hear the bad news. Yeah. It's like what our preacher preached, right? What makes heaven more sweet or salvation more beautiful is that we realize our lost condition to begin with. Mm -hmm. you, if you doubt that, trust me, if you starve for a few days, you'd appreciate the food that you get on your lap more than you've been used to eating every day. Have, you, have God ever put a trial in your life where you've learned to start being more content and more grateful after you've been through the trial? Amen. That's what makes it, uh, that's why it becomes more of a positive feeling to you. Okay, but anyway, look at Revelation 14, 6. I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto who? This is for everybody. This is not only to tribulation saints. This is everybody. So notice that they still get a chance after this event occurs. See that? Even after this event occurred, God still gave the whole world a chance to get saved. So let's keep reading verse 6. He preached to them that dwell on the earth, to every nation and kindred and tongue and people. Do you believe the King James Bible literally as it says? Yep. That that means everybody over there who had a chance. So they still have a chance. Verse 7, saying with a loud voice, Fear God, see that? And give him what? Give glory to him. That's part of the everlasting gospel. See that? A lot of people would read verse 10 through 11 and focus that as only the everlasting gospel. And uh, it's too late for you. But if you read verse 12, you'll notice right here it gives a solution. Here is the patient of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. So you'll notice right over here that God gives what? Literally everybody, verse 6. See? Yeah. Verse 6, them the chance. Fear God, give glory to Him, and what? That's all part. That, you'll notice that is definitely not the same as the Christian gospel. Yeah. This is literally matching Revelation 14, 12. It is a faith and work system in the tribulation. That's pretty obvious. Look, my friend, if you don't think it takes a lot of work to resist the Antichrist persecution where you're running for your life and against the whole world, if you don't think that's a work, I don't know what a work is because let me ask you this question. If someone were to make you deny Jesus Christ right now and persecute you, torture your wife and children and stuff like that, can you honestly say, oh, I'll never deny Jesus Christ? Are you at that place yet? Are you at that stage yet where I'm ready to lay down my life for Jesus? Some of you aren't really right there yet, right? Well, what if I were to tell you, well, if you're not right there yet, then you're not really saved. You're going to burn in hell. Then you would go, whoa, I thought I just had to believe on Jesus Christ for salvation. Yeah, isn't it that simple? 
Yeah, that believing on Jesus Christ for salvation does not mean, oh, I got to be willing to lay down my life for Jesus and die for him. Who, who's confusing that? I'll tell you who's confusing that. 90, if not 99% of churches who think that salvation is the same in the Bible from beginning to end. That's why we believe in a doctrine called dispensational salvation. Meaning in every dispensation, there's a different salvation. If you're going to be very honest, my friend, okay, with today's real life example about are you willing to die for Jesus Christ? If you can't say yes to that one, then do you want me to tell you that you're not saved then? That you're not really saved by the gospel of faith alone without works? No, you think that I'm crazy, man. Yeah. yeah. Literally, faith alone without works mean as it says. As a repentant sinner, I put my faith on what Jesus did on the cross. Not like, I'm going to die for you, Jesus Christ, and I'm going to go to torture and death. And No, okay? No, all right? All right, let's look at Revelation chapter 11 again. Revelation chapter 11. So we see right here that they do have a chance to get saved. They do have a chance to get saved over here. That would explain Matthew 25. So with your bookmark at Revelation 11, go to Matthew 25. Think about this. In Matthew chapter 25, it talks about 10 virgins. Five of them foolish, five of them wise. Now, for some of you who don't know, Matthew 25, so I'm not really going to explain step by step. You're just going to have to take my word for it. If not, then even better. Look it up at home yourself and don't be lazy and start accusing me. Oh, uh, you're teaching heresy, all right? All right? Go home and study, all right? All right. So, Matthew 24 is about the tribulation. That is undoubtable. Nearly every Bible scholar, amillennial, postmillennial, premillennial, whatever, they'll agree that's referring to end times. They just have a different opinion on what time period to put it at, okay? But we can all agree this is tribulation, all right? Matthew 24. Jesus did not stop talking. He continued talking the same context of the tribulation at chapter 25. So the story that you hear, the parable about ten virgins, Five of them wise, five foolish. Some of you know that parable, right? Yeah. That is a tribulation doctrine. Amen. That's not for Christians today. So a lot of people are worried, am I the foolish virgin that did not keep my Holy Spirit oil running? That does not apply to you. That's a tribulation saint. God, so if this is a tribulation saint, then think about this. So we got ten virgins keeping the Holy Spirit running. See that? These people are not on the Antichrist side. But five of them get raptured up, five of them get left behind. Why? They weren't doing their works as much as they should. That explains the leftover tribulation saints who enter the millennium. See that? So you got two answers here. So you got one answer, the tribulation saints who didn't do their works well enough to get raptured. And the second one is there's other people who have a chance to get saved. All right, let's look at Matthew chapter 25. Now look at this. Notice there's a rapture coming up. Verse 5, while the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight, there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us in you, but go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Notice there at the marriage with Jesus Christ, the bridegroom, the bride, the marriage supper of the Lamb, up in heaven, door shut. So five, so there's no doubt this is a rapture going on over here. So five of them get raptured. What happened to the remaining five? Left behind. Verse 11. Afterward came also the other virgin, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. This is no doubt talking about a rapture, because keep reading verse 13. Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. This is all in context of Jesus coming. See that? So there is no doubt. So we can see right here, this will explain the leftover tribulation saints 
who go through the tribulation and enter the millennium. All right, so unfortunately time is already up. I'm very surprised because I wanted to talk about, um, I'll just close off with verse 14 because it's very short. People are wondering what's the second and third woe, right? Remember the first woe, or did you forget? If you look back at Revelation uh, chapter uh, 8, if you look at Revelation chapter 8, verse 13, the, uh, the angel talks about woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth by reason of the other voices of the trumpet of the three angels which are yet to sound. He talks about three leftover trumpets, but then he talks about that woe at what? Verses 1, chapter 9, verses 1, all the way down to verse 11. There's your woe. And verse 12, one woe is passed. So we see the one woe. The one woe, if you recall, was referring to these mutant, locust, alien, whatever, hybrids, whatever you want to call these guys. But they come up out of no man's land, and then they just torment the people and torture them. That's one woe. You got other woes coming. That's going to be scary. We saw now the scary second woe. The scary second woe. See, the people were afraid of God that they gave him glory. What did God do? He took off a tenth of the Antichrist city over there. And 7,000 got killed. Not only that, they saw zombies walking around, going up to heaven. That put the fear of God on them after that. So there's your second woe. All right, we'll see the other judgments that the Lord is about to sound. I did not cover chapter 12. Chapter 12 is going to be interesting about some people asking questions. What judgment do Old Testament saints, tribulation saints, millennial saints go to? Because Christians have our own judgment, the judgment seat of Christ. That will be covered next Revelations Bible study. And the most intense one will be Revelation chapter 12, uh, verse 3. Seven-headed dragon. So I already taught a lesson on that. But I have to give an abridged version, so I'll give an abridged version of that about the seven-headed dragon. That's going to be intensely interesting. So that would cover Nimrod, Sennacherib, uh, uh, Nebuchadnezzar, etc. And I'm going to explain with each and every verse how that matches up with the head. So that will be next Revelation Bible study, though. We've got to close it off.